Welcome to the 21st episode of our podcast series for advisors considering the independent space. Today's episode is Are You Living Your Best Business Life? I'm Mindy Diamond, and this is Mindy Diamond on Independence. This podcast is available on our website, diamond-consultants.com, and on wealthmanagement.com, as well as iTunes and other resources. In our last episode, I had the privilege of talking with Tim Oden, the head of national sales for Schwab Advisor Services. He shared his deep understanding of the financial services industry, the RIA space and its evolution, and laid out what he called the choreography behind a move to independence. If you haven't had a chance to listen to episode 20 of this series, I encourage you to do so. You'll learn a lot. Throughout this series, we focus mostly on what it means to be independent and how to get from there to here. But you can't get there unless you've been strategic and thoughtful about what you're looking to accomplish and why. So in this episode, we take a step back to looking at a move from a different vantage point. That is beginning with the end in mind which actually is the second habit and my favorite in Stephen Covey's blockbuster business Bible, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And it is what I believe to be truly sage counsel. While most change comes when pain becomes unbearable, it doesn't have to be that way. I'd suggest you take a hard look at what you're doing now and what you want to be doing so you can identify the delta between the two. And then assess what changes you're willing to make in order to bridge the gap. It's about determining if there are options available that might better align with your specific needs, goals, and desires. And in that nexus is where your best business life can be found. So, if you can let go of preconceived notions about other firms and the industry landscape, a strategic process begins by asking yourself these questions. 1. Who and what do you value most in your life? Is it money, freedom, control, security, entrepreneurial spirit, or a combination of all of the above? Clarity about your own true north will make a world of difference in determining your next right move. 2. What are your goals? Is it to improve your take-home economy, to monetize your business to the max, to create an enterprise and build equity, to solve for succession, to be made whole on money as you leave on the table, to rid yourself of bureaucracy, to work in a plug-and-play environment, or again, a combination of all of the above. Your honest answers to these questions is where clarity begins. Three, do you have what you need today or do you want more? This is an honest assessment of your current situation. Does your firm and the status quo allow you to serve clients best and grow your business the way you want to? What are the good things that your firm offers that you would absolutely want to replicate? We call those the must-haves. Four, does your current firm support your values, goals, and desires? Is there congruence between your goals and your firm's priorities? Five, What changes are you willing to make to fill the gaps? How big is the delta between where you are and where you want to be? How much energy are you willing to expend to get there? Where are you willing to be flexible? And I might add that flexibility is key or you will never move. Six, do you have the right team and support both at home and at work? A move can be daunting especially if it's to independence. So do you have what you need to do it most efficiently and effectively? Seven, do you play the right role in your business and life? Are you the proverbial one-armed paper hanger who is spending time doing things that you don't love and that aren't your core competencies? What changes would you like to make and how can you make them? Eight, who will carry on your legacy? What are your succession plans? Do your successors work for you now? If not, how will you identify them? How do your succession plans figure into the overall equation? 
Would it serve you better to be an employee or a business owner? Nine, how do you get from here to there? What counsel, guidance, and education do you need? Who can provide it? How much time are you willing to allocate to full and complete education so you can make the best decision possible? And 10, probably most important, how do you want to live your business life? Are you an entrepreneur at heart? Or do you prefer to be an employee in a turnkey environment? If you do want to be independent, for example, what support would you need? How does your economic reality factor into your decision? Should I stay or should I go is the age-old question that every advisor has wrestled with at least once in his career. Whether it be in early 2009, just after the financial crisis of 08, upon the announcement that your firm is being sold, when your beloved branch manager leaves the firm, or when you just feel mounting frustrations and limitations and wonder whether the status quo still serves you and your clients. In any case, having a clear picture of your goals and an understanding of the options available is the only way to answer that question. Again, the question being, should I stay or should I go? Consider these examples. A very astute advisor described his goals as follows. In the short term, I want to take some chips off the table. I don't need the top deal on the street, but our team has more than a million dollars in unvested deferred comp between us, and we've never monetized our business. In the midterm, we want to better our take-home economy. Right now, we take home about 43 cents on the dollar. And in the long term, we want to build equity and create enterprise value. Another advisor who began with the end in mind said, I have a five-year runway to retirement. I could sign on to my firm's retiring advisor program, which would allow me to monetize my life's work. But it would bind my partners and team to a firm I've lost faith in. So if we are able to identify an option that allows me to be made whole on my unvested deferred comp and protect my retirement, I'm willing to consider anything. And the most important criteria is to be able to better serve clients than we can now and with more creativity and control. In both of these examples, becoming an RIA is a good option. But there might be other ways to meet these advisors' needs. Could be joining a quasi-independent boutique firm. It could be moving to a regional firm or an independent broker-dealer. But in the end, the ultimate choice will come down to the answers to these all-important strategic questions and to prioritizing which of the goals is most important. And as we've said before, flexibility is always critical. It's impossible to solve for 100% of what you think you want and need. So not only answer the tough questions, but be super clear about where you are willing to compromise. And by the way, it's worth noting, you don't have to compromise. If you decide that it's not that important to move or you can ultimately live with what's going on and the only way you'd move is if you've found perfection, we support that 100%. Establishing what's most important to your life's work, including the value you place on control, flexibility, freedom, and ownership, is what will help you to eliminate the inertia that makes a whole lot of people feel stuck. Truth be told, determining that where you work now is the exact right place for you is a perfectly valid decision. In any event, though, living in a world of uncertainty is self-limiting. So to gain insights and clarity around what you want and what it will take to get there is the key to living your best business life. In our next episode, Cheryl Penny, founder and CEO of Legendary Dynasty Financial Partners, will be my guest. He will share his thoughts on what the next five years hold for the RIA industry. It promises to be an interesting and educational conversation, and I hope you'll tune in. Until then, 
I encourage you to visit our website, diamond-consultants.com, and click on the tools and resources link for valuable content. And if you're not already a recipient of our weekly email, Perspectives for Advisors, click on the blog link to browse REITs and articles. Feel free to email or call me if you have specific questions. I can be reached at 908 879 1002 or by email at mdiamond at diamond-consultants.com. Please note that all requests are handled with complete discretion and confidentiality. Thank you for listening. I also want to thank wealthmanagement.com for sharing this podcast with their viewers and subscribers. This is Mindy Diamond on Independence.